Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the GSMC Hockey Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Garrison McDaniel, and we have a great show for you guys today where we'll be discussing the Panthers take a commanding 3 to nothing lead on the Edmonton Oilers in the Stanley Cup Final. It looks like the Florida Panthers will take away the Stanley Cup Final for the 2023-2024 season. However, there is still another game left to be played, so don't count the t- chickens before they hatch. That's what we're going to be talking about in Segment 2 if the Edmonton Oilers have a plausible chance of coming back in this series. You can also stick around for the segment three, where we will be discussing a bunch of trade rumors, including Martin Nichas of the Carolina Hurricanes, Patrick Laine of the Columbus Blue Jackets, and Nikolai Ehlers of the Winnipeg Jets. In our fourth segment of this of tonight, we're going to be talking about the Utah, their new brand, and how it really uh, reflects their entire uh, franchise as a whole. And then in our fifth and final segment of the night, we're going to be talking about Ryan Wors. Worsovsky, I believe that's how you pronounce his last name. Uh, he was named as the San Jose Sharks head coach. We're going to be talking about the state of that franchise right now, what he's coming into, and what they are looking at in, from, in, in terms of a future. But before, of course, we get into all of that, as always, if you would like to help support the show in any way, uh, use the gsmcpodcast.net tips and donations link. It does help this. It does help the GSMC Sports Network a lot, and it really does go a long way to support us and the creators here at the gsmc sports network so if you want to help out in any way use the gsmcpodcast.net tips and donations link and without further ado as always we're going to get right into this um oilers and stars game three this game played of course in rogers place in edmonton this was the first time we saw edmonton um this was the first time we saw edmonton host the stanley cup final since 2007 when they lost to the Anaheim Ducks, I believe, 2007-2006. One of, or not Anaheim Ducks, when they lost to the Carolina Hurricanes. Um, I believe that was 2006, actually. So 2006, that was the last time we saw Rogers place in a Stanley Cup final. Now, it was absolutely electric. The environment here at Rogers place was, uh, you know, something I haven't really seen before in a Stanley Cup final. And I I really enjoyed watching the build-up to this game. <clears throat> I mean, right from when the puck dropped, even when they were doing the uh, national anthems, it really just seemed uh, like such a fun place to be. Unfortunately for the crowd and the fans at Rogers Place in Edmonton, on or in Edmonton, Alberta, on that Thursday evening, it did not come to be. While the Florida Panthers are just showing how swarming this defense really can be. Of course, this game started, we'll go right into the game breakdown as we always do. This game started with a Sam Reinhart goal. It was an assist from Gustav Forsling. It was really just a Gustav Forsling. This was clearly a pass from him and it was an intended play. <clears throat> I believe Sam Reinhart had... Was it Evan Bouchard on him? Uh, I know it was a defender on um, on Sam Reinhart. Uh, but Gustav Forsling does really well to put the puck on the stick of um, of uh, Sam Reinhardt and was able to beat, uh, I believe it was Evan Bouchard who was right there on the um, on the backside with Sam Reinhardt. But Sam Reinhardt is able to just kind of tip this in from the pass, uh, from the point from Gustav Forsling. It was also a fantastic play from Alexander Barkov uh, to keep the puck in to the zone get a pass to Gustav Forsling he kept the puck in did a little spin around kept the puck in for Gustav Forsling Gustav Forsling sent it on the net goes to Sam Reinhardt Sam Reinhardt scores very impressive play from those three great link up Gustav Forsling of course so impressive in this game this happened one minute into this game and it really it, it really did affect how the Edmonton Oilers played as they started off very well but this happened and then it kind of sucked the life out of them for this first period <clears throat> the Florida Panthers do a fantastic job playing in the offensive zone, getting turnovers that create high uh, percentage chances, and the Edmonton Oilers did really good at not giving those up in the first couple of games. But in this game, doing that, giving that up was very unfortunate for the Edmonton Oilers, and it was just a bad play from Evan Bouchard, who couldn't knock Sam Reinhardt off the puck. It was also Stuart Skinner on this play. He comes out to play Gustav Forsling. Uh, of course, when you are facing a shot from the point, you go out of the net a little bit to cut down on the angle of places that the puck can really travel. However, he knows that Sam Reinhardt is on that 
uh, far side, and I would have loved to see Stuart Skinner stay a little bit back in the crease. He, uh, on this goal, was completely out of the crease, was fully out of uh, both skates on that white ice. Um, and you have Sam Reinhardt on the back door, and you know he's on the back door, and you saw him on the back door, and you're just... Uh, he's way too far out, and I think if he's a little bit closer to the net, he drops down into the butterfly once Gustav Forsling... He sends a shot along the ice. I mean, you could have went down into the butterfly... And he absolutely saves this if he does that. So I think this goal is definitely on Stuart Skinner a little a little bit. And it's on uh, the defenseman that was on Sam Reinhardt, who I believe is Evan Bouchard, but I could be wrong about that. Next goal of this game, it was Warren Fogle with an absolute snipe uh, on Sergei Bobrovsky. And it was a very impressive goal. I've been saying it all series long. They need to lift the puck on Sergei Bobrovsky. You cannot beat this guy if you just stay down low and stay five hole and stay low pad side. Warren Fogle takes that and he does go top side of the net there. It was a fantastic goal from him. Adam Henrique getting the primary assist and the only assist on this one. It really goes to show how lackluster their superstars have been that Warren Fogle and Adam Henrique are combining for your first goal of this game here. They need their superstars to show up and we're going to be definitely talking about that in the second segment. But Onto this game, the Ford Panthers then go and score three goals in the next six minutes. It's Vladimir Tarasenko, it's E2 Luosterinen, and Anton Lindell that combined for their second goal of the night midway through the second period. It's a fantastic goal from Vladimir Tarasenko. Sam Bennett scores from an assist from Matthew Kedchuk. It was a very impressive goal from Sam Bennett here, and a good assist. <clears throat> and a really good assist from Matthew Kachuk. And then immediately after that, only about uh, two minutes after that, it's Alexander Barkov <clears throat> with the fourth goal. Sorry. With the fourth goal of the night through two periods here. Alexander Barkov gets the assist from Evan Rodriguez and Sam Reinhart. Sam Reinhart had a fantastic game. Alexander Barkov had a fantastic game. Gustav Forsling had a fantastic game. The only guy that we really talk about a lot with the Panthers who didn't have a fantastic game was Sergei Bobrovsky, but he still had a near nine. 30 save percentage in this one so definitely not his worst performance here very impressive what he's been able to do all series long a 1.33 goals against average now for bob very impressive um but the edmonton oilers definitely did take a charge in this game it was philip broberg from mcdavid and darnell nurse getting uh the score uh within two here and then they're able to score again um, in the third period, it's Ryan McLeod on uh, Brett Kulak and Connor McDavid. Again, his second assist of the night for Connor McDavid. For the Oilers, they definitely had a chance here at the end. They had a uh, Connor McDavid got past the defense. He goes, uh, he goes around the net, sends the puck into the slot uh, from behind the net. Sergey Bobrovsky is absolutely scrambling, and it goes to Ryan McLeod's stick. And if Ryan McLeod lifts the puck, this game is a tie. I, this game is a tied hockey game and they're going into overtime with all the momentum in the world but ryan mcleod is unable to lift the puck just sends it right in on sergey bobrovsky's bottom pads he rushed the shot he needed to but he needs to think lifting the puck there getting some height on this putting it in the upper half of the net and it's a goal but he's unable to do so and this game just goes to the Florida Panthers as they're able to kill the time as the Oilers uh, pull Stuart Skinner, but it didn't matter. The Panthers do really good at killing time when they are um, at that uh, man disadvantage on a six on five. Brought the puck to the corner of their uh, of their defensive zone and it stayed there for the last like 20 seconds of this game. So the Florida Panthers come away with this game three victory. It is a three to nothing series lead that the Florida Panthers have on the Edmonton Oilers. The stars of the night, I have my first star of the night going to Gustav Forsling. Not the offensive side of this, but the defensive for Gustav Forsling. He does add a little bit of offensive production with an assist. <clears throat> but I'm really looking at the four hits. <clears throat> I'm really looking at the four hits that he gave and the 28-41 minutes of ice time that he has. Gustav Forsling had to match Connor McDavid and Leon Draisaitl in this game, and had to match the um, uh, the intensity that those guys come at come out with every single game. He had he's done it in game one, done it in game two, and did it again here in game three. Of course, Connor McDavid getting a couple of assists on the night, uh, but 
I mean, all for naught, and in most part because of this guy, Gustav Forsling. We talk about him uh, plenty, but really, I can't emphasize enough how important this guy has been for the Florida Panthers, how important of an acquisition this guy really was back in 2021 when he got when the Florida Panthers and Bill Zito got him off of waivers from the Carolina Hurricanes. The Hurricanes didn't see enough in him, and that is why you got to hang on to guys kind of like this there are just slow developers in the NHL. Gustav Forsling was one of them, but now developing into a <clears throat> now developing into a bona fide top two defenseman. Very impressive what Gustav Forsling has been able to do in the Stanley Cup Finals. A large, large part of why the Florida Panthers have a three nothing series lead. Without this guy, I don't think that the Panthers are winning the series. Uh, really, to be quite frank with you, he does so well at getting the dangerous forwards away from the net. Zach Hyman is in his own personal, uh, you know, uh, he can't get past Gustav Forsling in front of the net. And that's what happens. So very impressive what this guy's able to do. Of course, he is alongside Aaron Ekblad, who is a fantastic defenseman in his own right. Both of them playing some of the best defensive-minded defensive defensive minded defenseman play that I've seen in a very long time together and then of course we got to talk about Alexander Barkov this guy is special he's just a different talent and we talk about him so often one goal one assist and a two a plus two on the plus minus Alexander Barkov the best defensive forward in the game he also can do it on the offensive side and he showed that in this game gets the game winning goal for the uh, Florida Panthers uh, at the time, it was to go up 4-1. We thought it was just insurance. <clears throat> but it was. It proved to be a very important insurance goal. So Alexander Barkov gets the second star of the night for the Florida Panthers. It was kind of tough to decide it between those two guys, whether I was going to go with Gustav Forsling but Alexander Barkov. But I chose to go with Gustav Forsling because I truly believe that he is the difference maker right now for the Florida Panthers because Zach, he's taking Zach Hyman completely out of this game. And it's so impressive what he's able to do whenever that first line is out there on the ice. It is also very impressive what Alexander Barkov is able to do playing against Connor McDavid for most of the time. So that'll wrap it up for this first segment of the night, talking about Florida's victory over the Edmonton Oilers. When I come back, we will, of course, be talking about it, whether or not the Oilers can overcome a 3 nothing series deficit and what they need to do uh, to turn the tide of this series into their favor.